committee. So uh, I'll be chairing the meeting today. Um, I think in our packets we've got uh, the minutes from our September 12th meeting. Uh, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to look over those. In just a minute. Move approval. Second. There's a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Okay. Uh, Dixon, you want to give us a financial report? <clears throat> yes, I will. It's, uh, it was relatively inactive during the past month. Uh, during September, UMS uh, made its second installment. We had no expenses during the month. And then in early October, we had a small expense for the maps that were the, uh, used in the demonstration for the September meeting. The craft and tall has been paid in full. And Charles Bilks has some unbilled time for the work he spent uh, in the last month on uh, the site evaluation for the 23 submissions, but we don't have any, it, there's no, it's unbilled time, so there's no current balance. We have an account balance of $63,644, and the only contingent liability that I, or I guess would be considered contingent that I'm aware of is the unbilled time for Charles Fields. And I submit that for your approval and recommend it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Any four members? Do I hear a motion to accept so the move. report? Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. <laughs> okay. Um, CJ, you want to give us a Hayward Housing Committee report? Mr. Chair, I've submitted a written report. I'm not going to read it this time. Um, a meeting was held at the Clinton School of Public Service in which uh, primarily citizens in favor of site number two came forward to speak. I have those comments listed here in the report. And no major citizen uh, concerns were listed in that meeting. And we've set up an additional, uh, our next meeting for the 29th at the Bailey Alumni Center at 6 p.m. All right, so October 29th at 6 p.m. At the Bailey Alumni Center at PLR at 6 p.m. Okay. All right, good. Any questions of anybody here to save this for CJ? I, I think I might note one thing in this report. There are nearly 16 favorable considerations are 16 considerations listed by residents or friends of Hanger Hill neighborhood. I thought it was important to list those. What is the date again of that meeting? It will be October the 29th. Thank you. And that's going to be a Monday. Okay. Um, Dilts consulting report. Uh, Dixon, you might give that report. Yeah, this is the, uh, Charlie Dilts was charged with uh, sort of reviewing the 23 sites that were initially proposed and uh, and providing uh, recommendations on, uh, on uh, those sites that, we should, that he would propose that we move forward with, and he provided his comments in a letter dated September 28th uh, to Dr. Good. And basically in the letter, sort of re-stressed um, his, uh, his, how impressed he was with the substantial response of the community here and the involvement. Um, chose to also, in other parts of the letter, talk about the success factors of parts and tried to weigh those into his um, into his recommendations. Uh, basically, the four sites that he is uh, suggesting that we consider further are site number eight, 
It's the site of the southwest corner of Asher Avenue and University Avenue, um, immediately adjacent to the University of Arkansas Little Rock campus. Uh, and that's particularly attractive. and uh, has the support of the University uh, District Development Corporation. Um, the, um, there was uh, expressed some concern about the unusual uh, U shape of this particular site, but uh, basically it was one of his choices. Uh, the second one that he recommended was site number two, which is at 701 Collins Street. Um, the site is subject to a lot of thoughtful planning recommendations on how to improve the neighborhood. Uh, moreover, it is controlled by one owner and basically vacant for ease of development. And it's also close to a number of major public anchors, such as the Clinton Presidential Library and Museum, Heifer International World Headquarters in the River Market District, and the airport. So site number two was uh, the second site uh, he recommended. Um, the third, site number six, uh, Riverfront Plaza. This is uh, uh, Allied One Drive, uh, building number five. Um, this is a uh, site of uh, some of uh, the former Altel headquarters uh, contains primarily a one 12 story, 224,000 square foot office building uh, with paved parking. Uh, I think there's some also some additional land associated with uh, this proposal, but site number six, um, again, in the uh, Riverdale areas. Uh, one that he recommended, and the last of the four was site number 13, uh, which is uh, 1911 to 2225 John Barrow Road. This is a site that's uh, it's vacant, and therefore is easy to develop, a good technology park. It um, does contain access to infrastructure and utilities, and has uh, essentially a lot of natural features and a water feature that are part of uh, part of that particular site. Um, it's concerned with this site as it was located some distance uh, from the sponsor institutions and is divided into three parcels. Uh, Mr. Chairman, those were the, the four uh, sites that were recommended by Dilks Consulting, uh, again in the letter of September 28th. And I would uh, uh, propose that the committee uh, consider, uh, as a motion, consider these uh, four sites. Uh, Further consider these uh, sites for uh, for uh, development. Okay, so that's in the form of a motion. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Second. Second to that. Okay. Okay. Any discussion, Mr. Chairman? Uh, several weeks ago, I wrote uh, Dr. Good, and uh, I think she distributed my letter that I would not uh, I'm recusing on any. Uh, site selection process that involves uh, submissions either by Collier's or by Flake and Kelly Commercial. And there are no, these four do not involve any sites from Collier's, but two of the four were submitted by Flake and Kelly Commercial. And so any participation by me will be limited to if I know a fact and can answer a question factually, but I won't uh, render an opinion or vote. Okay. I think we all got a copy of, of that letter. Of business, so. Okay. so, any other discussion about going forward with these four sites? Well, um, maybe not discussion, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the the question for me is jumping ahead. Is the facilitation of the public meetings meant to spur the conversation around the evaluation of these sites? Right. Okay. I mean, we're going to have some public comment today, too, but I think that's the, from my, my understanding, that's the point of the two meetings on the, when is it, Jay? 23rd and 24th, and that will be an item that we'll discuss in a few minutes where Mr. Dilks will actually be in town, uh, along with a facilitator that we'll discuss in a few minutes to lead that process from the public's perspective and have the board there as, uh, from a listening standpoint, as opposed to a participation standpoint. Okay. Is that answer mm -hmm. Okay. So any, any further discussion? We have a motion to second to move forward these four slides. I'll second the motion. Okay. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. <coughs> okay. Uh, public meetings facilitator. I know we've had some suggestions for that. I think Jay, have you been Mr. Flake's been working on it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Good's request. I've contacted uh, several in the community to uh, <coughs> get ideas. There were no uh, there, there was no one strong, strongly advocating any particular uh, facilitator, but I received several ideas, I think 13 in, in total. And uh, my recommendation from reviewing those is that we engage uh, former Congressman Vic Snyder to be the facilitator Dr. Snyder agreed to serve if the board uh, selects him. Uh, and based, based on the conditions, that everyone understands that he's not going to uh, become familiar with or, or, or cer and certainly not uh, an expert in the four of sites that are being considered are in the tech park criteria, but his job would strictly be to conduct the meeting and act as a facilitator, uh, and, and but would do that and, and rely on Charles Dilks for any responses to questions or comments. That he, if, if the board wanted him to do it, then he will, he will do it on those conditions. And, and I would move that, that uh, he be selected as the facilitator. Move and second by the five. Okay. Any discussion of this? Any further comments? Or? So, Mr. Chair, my question is, uh, what what is to come out of these conversations? Is there a mission? Is there uh, something drawn up that says, here's what we're uh, as a board, we're trying to, to get at and understand. And obviously, we probably ought to vote on the motion since that is is in regard to the to the meeting itself. So, and then I think we ought to go into that because that was part of our discussion at the last meeting. Is it okay with you? Yes, sir. To wait on that discussion. Mm -hmm. okay. Any any further questions about the the pending vote here about the. Did, uh, did you have an alternative uh, facilitator in mind? I don't. I think you'd make a great one. All right. All those in favor of, of uh, having Dick be the facilitator say aye. 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 All, the po all those opposed say no. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. 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 Chair, in, in uh, response to Mr. Duvall's question, if you'll recall last, and, and it's reflected in the minutes, at our last meeting we talked about a process moving forward and um, obviously one of the things that, that we're seeking at every step of, of the way is input, comment from, uh, from the, the public at large. This meeting schedule that is, uh, is now proposed for you as the next agenda item and you'll see in your packet a one-page sheet listing not only uh, those two meetings uh, that are being proposed but also the neighborhood housing committee meeting uh, were, were intended to give the, the general public an opportunity uh, to come in and facilitate a discussion and, and discuss these four sites along with the consultant Mr. Dilks um, we said at our last meeting that it would be a wonderful opportunity for us to listen uh, and not necessarily conduct a meeting, that this would be a facilitated process that we've now chosen um, Dr. Snyder to conduct and would, would give two separate opportunities for folks from all around the community to come and um, ask questions about these four specific sites that were made public last week with the uh, release of Mr. Delk's report uh, that now, as of tonight, have been uh, 
approved in terms of moving forward from this board standpoint. Obviously, we'll, we'll have to uh, do additional research as we uh, go throughout this process, but as we start that research, uh, having the opportunity for uh, the general public to come and ask questions and have uh, those questions answered by both uh, the consultant and where need be facilitated by Dr. Snyder, we believe was the next step in the process of being inclusive. Thank you. That answer your question. My question here, I think, uh, is, uh, is there a chance that we would anticipate the, uh, the different sponsors of the four sites in question to be present at this meeting? We anticipate having that. Uh, sort of that is that is certainly something that we can request. It's not we, we obviously have not had I have not had a conversation with any of these folks uh, simply because I wanted to wait until today's meeting to to make it official that these were the four that were moving forward. So we can certainly make that request of, of, of those that submitted these uh, four particular sites so that in case there are questions that they could answer, um, they could be in attendance as well. I think that would be very helpful. How do we get to a point, excuse me, how do we get to a point where um, the sponsors of these sites get an opportunity to flesh out their full proposal? Is that done in these public facilitated meetings? Is that done um, through writing, uh, through another proposal? How do, we, how do we get to hear their voice? Their pitch? How do we get to hear their pitch so that we can make decisions relative to information that we don't yet have? Right, and I, I Mr. Chairman, I just from the standpoint of following the process that we, we discussed last month, uh, there's a significant amount of additional research that, that will need to be done on these sites. And it, it may be determined as we go through that process that there are some that, that won't continue on. Obviously the board We'll, we'll have an opportunity to uh, conduct the research, look at that research, make a decision. Uh, obviously, in the in the, the final uh, decision process, that there will be ample opportunity for uh, those proponents of the particular site still in consideration to make presentations not only to the board but to the public at large as to why. Uh, they believe their site is the correct place to be and, and we will need to weigh that with the research as well as input from the consultant um, in terms of what we found as we've gone further in the process in order to create decision points. Is it possible for the consultant to eliminate one of these four before we get to that point? I'm just speaking as one board member. I think that's our job. Uh, obviously we can seek input from him. But I think it's our job, to, if, if we move through the process and find that one or more, for whatever reason, simply won't work, then I think we as a board will, will need to make that decision as we winnow down to uh, the, the final site that is, that is chosen. I think those are good points. I think, CJ, you know, you pointed out in the last week, one, one big factor in this is, is how this, what's, what's the best thing to do financially? You know, so I mean, as we go through this process, besides hearing the comments from the public, what they think, listening very carefully to to their input, that that you know, Dr. Snyder will help us facilitate listening to the consultant, what he's got to say about it. Uh, I think it'll put us on the path forward to take a really deeper look at all these sites, and then we can determine, you know, from the from the number of uh, criteria, what what's the best way to go forward. And, and narrow them down ourselves. Dixon. Well, I, I would suggest that you consider that we have uh, these presentations that CJ mentioned, which it certainly are, are in order, after the facilitated meetings, right. so that they can be structured and so that the board can be free to ask questions of the presenters when the facilitated meeting, the board is listening. And, and, uh, uh, and that way, also, you don't have to, to repeat it. Uh, the same thing twice, uh, 
because the purpose of the of the public comment it facilitated meetings is to allow general public comment and it really might help the presenters of the four to hear those comments and it might affect what they say in response to that in their presentation so like, yeah, you know, Dixon, I don't always get to the right point fast, but sooner or later I find my way there. And that's really what I was trying to say. <laughs> that is, I'm hoping that we can hear the voice of all four sponsors at some point to help us make that decision. Make a decision. All right. And, and with that, um, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would make a motion that unless there are other reasons to change uh, the times of these meetings obviously we we have contacted mr. Dilks to see if he would be available uh, he will be available uh, on the 23rd and 24th to participate in these facilitated discussions uh, as, as mr. Flake discussed dr. Snyder's available and so we have uh, chosen two different times so to give folks uh, alternatives in terms of, of when they might be available to attend and participate the first would be on October the 23rd at 7 30 p.m. Uh, at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock Engineering and Information Technology building room number 203 so that would be October the 23rd at 7 30 p.m. Uh, the second would be the following evening on Wednesday October the 24th uh, it would also be at U UALR and this one would be in the Jack Stevens Center, the Legends Room, uh, which provides for uh, ample parking and access to the public. Uh, so we, we asked UALR if they would be uh, nice enough to allow us to use those rooms for those two days. They have agreed, and if it's the will of the board, we'll move forward and announce uh, this is the public meeting schedule and also invite the presenters, or excuse me, the proposers, I should say, uh, to, to be in attendance that evening as well, to participate and or listen. Obviously, we'll be there from a listening uh, standpoint. And then beyond those two facilitated discussion meetings, then move to uh, establish a meeting when the presenters themselves can come and, and make pre presentations, excuse me, about their specific sites to the board and uh, we'll have an opportunity to, to ask questions of them and obviously the, the board, or excuse me, the public would also have that opportunity at that time. So with your uh, permission, I will make the motion that we accept this public meeting schedule and begin the process of moving forward and looking at these four selected sites that are on our current short list. What was the time of the second meeting? 6 p.m., or excuse me, 5 p.m. on Wednesday, October 24th. 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October the 23rd. Okay, so you put that in the form of a motion down here, second? Second. Second by CJ. Any more discussion or comments by anybody? I would just make one comment. I, I, I didn't get sort of, I wasn't overwhelmed uh, personally by uh, the level of enthusiasm I saw in this in this Dilks consulting letter. So I mean, as we sort of look at the four sites, I think we just need to sort of keep an objective view here. Uh, these are not to be all in. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of this meeting schedule say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Okay, anything else before we go to our public? Comment period. Nope. nope. Is this on up here? Is that on the podium mic? Okay. So, uh, anybody wants to make any statement or comment, you're welcome to do so now. If you would just come up and state your name, and uh, we'll be happy to try to answer any questions or. Comments, please, any comments that you've got? Good evening. Hello. Oh. 
first of all, I tell like that good. I really miss her then. I hope she's still there. My question is, I came, and this is what I need to know. I understand that you're selling the four cycles. And I don't know if this is a very straightforward question. You may not even an answer. But does that mean with your four cycles, does that mean that Forest Hill is no longer uh, considered? That is the question that I need to know. And if you can't answer it now, you just tell me you can't answer it now. We'll get back with it later. But that is something that I need to know. So can one of you all help me? Well, I, I will be more than happy to, to address that. Um, as Dr. Good, and I don't have a copy of her letter, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking this way, but I'm trying to speak okay. to you, so okay. please, please forgive me. Uh, going back to the June 21st of 2012 um, letter that Dr. Good sent to Mayor Stodola and the members of the Lower Rock City Board, uh, it stated under item number two that the original three sites, of which the site that you're, you're, you're asking the question about, Forest Hills, that letter states that all of them are taken off the table and will not be given further consideration unless there is substantial neighborhood interest and support for further consideration. And then it even went on further to state, we ask that any such interest be communicated to the Technology Park Board through either at-large city director Joan Adcock or the ward director in whose ward the site is located. So at this point in time, uh, to, to my knowledge, and I don't know if any other board member has any additional knowledge, but to my knowledge, uh, that has not taken place. So these are the only four sites currently under consideration. Okay, so it's fair to say that Forest Hill is no longer under consideration? Yes, ma'am. It's fair to say. Okay, thank you. And Phyllis, I know you didn't ask this okay. question, but I might want to ask okay. for clarification. So this is me to you. So did you just hear that involved in a process for consideration, if, if there was to be consideration for Forest Hills, it would come because citizens have come forward from Forest Hills exactly. and they've gone to Ken? Yes. Or they've gone to Mary. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> or Joan. Okay. Joan. Right, Joan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So it would be fair to say it's really, it's really not all, none of this uh, certain amount of maybe some go to it. That's what I need to know. And, and my understanding is none, there have been no public comments or letters forwarded to either one of those individuals. Say, say that again. Uh, Joan, yes. Joan, Joan has not received anything and Ken's not received anything. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. My name is Anika Whitfield. Hello, everybody. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about the public meetings that are being scheduled. Could you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you hope to gather from the meetings, what you plan to give at the meetings, and what you plan to facilitate in those meetings? Jay, you tried to answer that a little while ago. Yes, ma'am. The, the uh, purpose of those public meetings, as we discussed at our board meeting last month, was to, first of all, bring in a facilitator so that it's not the board conducting the meeting, uh, which Dr. Snyder, as you've heard, has agreed to, to be the facilitator, along with Mr. Dilks, the consultant, who has done the analysis of all of the sites and recommended these four sites for further consideration, to be able to stand before the general public and have a discussion about the process, those four sites, any questions uh, of the consultant in regard to his analysis of those sites, and to seek further comment from the general public on each of those four. Okay. And is there still a, I don't know if you would call it a deadline for November, I believe it was the 14th, is that what you all came up with for choosing the final site? Is there? No, ma'am, not to my knowledge in terms of a, a specific date has never been given that I'm aware of as a deadline for when the final site would be selected. That's a process that we've discussed in terms of how we were going to go about it, but in terms of a specific date 
in which it would be determined, to my knowledge, has never been decided. So in November, the meeting in November, what can we expect then? Are you meet, what are we meeting for in November? What are you all meeting for? Uh, that will obviously be yet to be determined based upon what's com what comes out of these fac facilitated public discussions, number one, and then number two, it might also be the opportune time for the presenters to come in and make presentations about their specific sites. Is there a time frame that you all have set um, a goal to meet to begin groundbreaking or begin um, moving forward with a a actual potential site area? Uh, no, ma'am. Obviously, as, as I've said earlier, that process has been discussed, but in terms of a timeline with specificity on when a site would be determined, which then obviously would lead to potential purchase, groundbreakings, those kinds of things, that's still decisions to be made in the future. So are there any federal guidelines or any state guidelines or anything uh, that might cause one to have to move Rapid pace as, as, a, as it uh, pertains to building this particular tech park. Um, are there any funds or monies, bonds, etc., that would cause for this to have to be done at a certain time frame? I'm not aware of, of any federal guidelines that, that we're currently considering because I'm not aware of any federal dollars. Well, I don't think you're pursuing federal mm -hmm. dollars, but I, I'm asking specifically. To your knowledge, are there any federal, state, or city guidelines as it relates to monies, funding, regulations, in order for you to build based on the $22 million that the citizens of Little Rock or those persons that pay city taxes in Little Rock have invested in, in this project? Is there The only um, aspect of that that I'm aware of, Dr. Whitfield, would be the city board action in regard to um, the site selection process but beyond that i'm not aware of it could you elaborate on that what what do you mean specifically about what i don't know no what you just said about the city of little rock the city of little rock as evidenced by the letter that i was looking at a few minutes ago um there was a there was action taken by the city board on June the 19th, according to this letter, um, in regard to the selection process, the timing in which that process would take place beyond that specific ordinance. I don't have a copy of it in front of me, so I can't speak to the specifics beyond uh, what we've already discussed. Those, that would be the only thing I'm aware of that, that would be an issue uh, in regards to timing. Okay. And as far as questions um, that the public might be willing to submit, or how are you all publicizing this on the website, the public meeting, and the locations? How are you going about that? Like, yes, ma'am. You know? as, as we have with uh, both neighborhood housing committee meetings, as well as these uh, technology park authority board meetings, there will be uh, a media advisory sent to all media. And then beyond that, we also send it to the city for dissemination to all the neighborhood association uh, contacts that they have so that we not only use the media to get the word out about public meetings, uh, but also use the neighborhood association network as well. That would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Dr. Whitfield, relative to the November 14th date? Yes. The only thing that I see that we have documented as to what might happen in that meeting is that we would begin as a board the short list review and possibly make an elimination proposal but that's the only thing publicly that we've stated relative to that date Good afternoon, I'm Kathy Wells, W-E-L-L-S, with uh, the Downtown Neighborhood Association in this uh, forum. Um, I did appear on the list from your minutes uh, a month ago, and uh, at that point the name wasn't spelled W-E-L-L-S, so you might want to make that typographic correction. A um, couple of points I wanted to raise with you. Uh, in circulating the um, meeting notices for the 23rd and the 24th, uh, let me encourage you to get that out now, not later. Yes, the city is getting stuff out, and I did get something for this meeting, but it came yesterday. I had other resources that got me 
uh, notified and passing it on further in my network earlier. And really, the earlier the better with these kind of community notices. In fact, let me seize once again the opportunity to promote the notion that since most neighborhoods meet monthly, the ideal public advance notice for major decisions is six weeks. We ain't gonna make it this time, but for future reference, that's what works with monthly meetings and neighborhoods. The other thing that I would submit for your consideration is a question that came up at Mr. Duvall's meeting uh, recently. Uh, one of the citizens who had come out had uh, been uh, active in real estate in his career. And he raised the question about whether some of the property at uh, one of the sites was in the floodplain, the one at Asher University. Uh, and I didn't want to get that on the record with you and to get an answer from you. Uh, is any of the property under consideration in the floodplain? And if so, why on earth would you buy that? Thank you. I mean, I think all that, uh, great, great points, Mr. Well, I appreciate you making them. I think all that, will, as we go forward with these sites, we're obviously, those are, those are issues that we'll have to take into consideration. If it is, we certainly wouldn't do that, you know, if there's any danger of that. So that'll be part of our other process in vetting these properties. If you have anything else to say? I'd like to add a point or two. There are plenty of reasons why you may purchase property that has a, a part of it in the floodplain, and I, I, one of the one of the criteria uh, that's listed, or uh, a criterion, is a uh, water feature, and uh, Coleman Creek, for example, is not only uh, in the floodplain and much of it, but but it floodway, and it still can be used as an amenity. So. Uh, as long as it's not that you're not paying the price of something that's usable, uh, but as a, but as a feature, and that the, you can incorporate the feature without adversely affecting your development plan, then there's no reason to eliminate something because it has uh, some fraction of it in the floodplain. First, I must say that your October meetings are scheduled not in accordance with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission schedule. October 23rd and 24th, we're at smack dab in the middle of Mother Lily Deer <laughs> which is a major Arkansas institution. <laughs> Many of us won't stay in the woods at that time. We're glad to see you got your camera along those days, so it's, <laughs> it looks like you're ready. <laughs> Another concern is still with the forest hills and the other neighborhoods. You still keep using terms like not currently may be considered, but that still is a possibility that we can be brought up again. And we really want something very definite. Yes or no. Some of the writings in the Duke's report seem to indicate that there's unhappiness with all the four sites, such as, I must say, I'm not convinced that any of the sites are ideally suited for the establishment of the technology park. Proximity is a high success factor. It should be located at home the university campus or adjacent to it. And a few pages later, it says, close proximity to one of the major university sponsors may preclude the other sponsors. I'm taking part in that enterprise. But I looked in Act 1045 of the state legislature and it actually said that the university property would be considered as one of the prime locations. And here we have the same property. It needs to be proximity. <coughs> proximity is important here. If you pay this letter, we're saying that it's too close. How can it be too close if, if, if an actual campus was 
in action for the first step legislation. Thank you. 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 Thank you.